back to another episode of our series, Surviving a Job Loss. I am Ashani Sanders, and in today's episode, we're going to dive into a critical topic for anyone that's looking to bounce back stronger after a job loss, because like I said, it's a devastating blow to you. And we're going to talk about upskilling and reskilling, right? Because the job market in 2024 is evolving faster than ever, and it's just really different. And so staying motivated means, and staying competitive, right, means adapting and growing your skill set. So whether you're looking to make a complete pivot for your career, or you just maybe want to have some of your current skills, this episode is going to be really packed with a lot of actionable advice that's going to really help you navigate those borders and really help you get into your next role. So let's go ahead and get into it. This is Girl Take Note, a podcast for women who are looking to turn their dreams into reality. Do you want to start your podcast, but you're worried about the cost? Well, I've got the perfect solution for you. I'm Shawnee Sanders. I'm from the Girl Techno Podcast, and I'm here today to tell you all about my podcast starter kit, only available on my Amazon storefront. This kit has everything you need to get started from headphones to microphones to audio interfaces, all under $500. It is one of the most affordable kits to help you get started with your podcast's dreams today. So don't wait. Go ahead and grab yours now. Click the link in the description below and start shopping. First, let's talk about why upskilling and reskilling is an important thing for us to do in 2024. And with technology advancing rapidly the way it's going, many roles are either changing or disappearing. You know, a lot of them are disappearing because of technology. So new skills are in demand and employers are looking for candidates who can adapt, who can really adapt. And according to recent studies, Industries like tech, which is my background, of course, healthcare and finance are particularly hungry for workers with an up-to-date skill set. So this means that by investing time in your learning new skills, like investing in learning new skills, you're not only making yourself more employable, but you're future-proofing your career because it's important for us to be able to adapt and change to this ever-changing career market. And we know that with this change, right, a lot of things are becoming more with AI. And AI is a big piece of so many different jobs today. And if we are not into the development side of it, not into learning and adapting to something new, then you're really going to be lost in this new jobscape, this new job landscape. And so that's why I want to discuss how we identify which skills are in demand, because that's important. And the first thing we're going to want to do is we want to start with job searching, like postings, right? Different posts that we want in our either desired field or industry. And you want to look at what the skills and qualifications that keep appearing in a lot of those different jobs. So platforms like LinkedIn, Glassdoor, or those industry-specific type of job boards are great places to start. And also, we have to consider speaking with other industry professionals or mentors, because I talked about mentors before and how important those are, just to kind of get their take on which skills are crucial in the next coming years. So I think it's important for us to identify what's coming next, right? A lot of people tell you, like, try to get on the forefront of what's about to happen next. A lot of people got left behind when AI came. When AI took about took over a lot of things, a lot of people got left behind. When technology just started advancing so much, it took away a lot of people's jobs. And because those people who were in those positions didn't know how to work on the current technology, they lost their jobs. And so that's why if you're anybody that's looking to pivot into a new field, you're going to want to first focus on your transferable skills that you already have and that can be applied to new roles. And that's one of the things that I had to do myself and I'm still doing is that I have to look at what are my core skill set that I have already? What do I have now that I can actually go and maybe have to pivot into a new field? Like technology right now is so it's such a desert to me because it's like nobody is hiring. I know so many people who are also in the tech field that have lost their jobs and just can't seem to find anything. And now it really does make me think about, okay, Shawnee, do you have to now start considering a completely new career, a complete change, right? I mean, my goal is honestly to sit here is to really do the podcast and that's what I'm focusing on right now. But I had to think about this when I was heavily into the job search. I really had to think about, will I have to go to another industry? I love technology. I love e-com, right? Will I have to think about going into something different? 
And it was a hard thing for me to, it was a hard thing for me to grasp it, to understand that, God, I've been doing this thing for so long. I don't want to move into anything else, you know, because I get comfortable, right? We get comfortable in the field that we in or in the space that we in, where really we need to be more of adaptable. And I had to be like, okay, Sean, you're going to have to adapt. You're going to have to really think about what are those core skills that you have that are transferable to any industry that you go into. And a lot of time, that's just a skill set. That's technology that you work on, right? A lot of that is transferable in different industries. And once you've identified those skills, right, the skills you need, now it's time to start learning. And this is what I like. The good news is that there's no shortage when it comes to resources and available online. You know, things that are available online, courses online, platforms like Corsica, platforms like Thinkific, platforms like YouTube, right? Those things also in LinkedIn learning as well. And they offer courses from everything, right, to coding, to project management, to digital marketing. And we can utilize this platform. Many of these platforms offer certifications that can be a great addition to your resume. And when choosing a course, we want to look for the ones that are up to date, highly rated, and are taught by industry professionals. Because we have to remember that the goal is to not only learn a new skill, but it's also to demonstrate your commitment to your growth and adaptability. And potential, that's potential to potential employers, right? They want to see that you're able to adapt and grow. If they see that you took a class and now you're learning some new skill set and you got a new certification that you've added to help you get into a different arena, a different market, it really does show that you are adaptable and it shows that you are willing to learn. And I think that does help. So if you are that corporate girly, and you're still working in corporate and you want to try to pivot to something else or you want to try to pivot because, listen, you know that here on the Girl Take My Podcast, we're all about entrepreneurship. We're all about helping you turn your passions into profits. But if you're in your career right now, because we talk a lot to the nine to five girlies, and if you're in your career right now and you're looking to maybe move up or maybe pivot to a new industry, then episodes like this is really important to you because you want to think about what can I, how can I upskill or reskill? What can I do? What thing, what new thing can I learn to make me more marketable? And how can I adapt to my ever-changing landscape for my particular field? And so I think this is a, this is definitely important because once you identify those skill set, once you start, you know, doing the courses, getting the certifications, the next thing that we always have to remember is that after that, how do we how do we now market them effectively? Right. How do we show people that, OK, I've gained this new skill set. I got this new certification. How do we do it effectively and not get lost in a sea of things? Right. I know one of the things we're definitely going to do is that we're going to update our resume and we're going to update our LinkedIn profile and whatever professional networking sites that you are on with your new qualifications, because those do help and stand out. And like I told you in the last episode, we have to think about how we can. Use our LinkedIn when it comes to search engine optimization, when it comes to SEO and being able to add a certification to your LinkedIn profile, because that's a keyword, right? Maybe it'd be Google Analytics or whatever certification it is. That's the type of skill set that employees are searching for on these job networking sites, especially LinkedIn. So that might be something, even things like Indeed and stuff like that. All these job are looking, employees are looking for people with certain skill sets. And once you're able to add a particular skill set that you've taken out on your own now, and this is why it looks so good. It's a skill that you decided to do on your own. It's not a skill that your job made you do. It's not a skill that you had no choice but to do, right? It's a skill that you wanted to do and you did it yourself. And that's why it shows that adaptability, that um, that willingness to learn, that willingness to grow. And it really does make you a little bit more marketable to current potential employers. And that's what you want. Like I said, either you want to move up from your position so you can get a higher salary and be able to really invest in your passion, right? And start making profits for it. Or you're looking just to pivot into something completely different. And so you have to remember that and any relevant projects or practical applications of your own you can show in your skill set is also a good idea to create like a portfolio. Like if you're in a field where it's like valuable, sometimes the text is valuable, right? When you come to like coding and design and writing, right? You sometimes want to have a portfolio because those kind of things do really help you get the job when you have something samples to send them. And additionally, another thing, because I talk about this a lot too, Let's not underestimate the power of networking. 
Let's not underestimate that. Let your connections know that you've been upskilling, right? And that you are ready for new opportunities, that you've gained a new certification. Because sometimes you simply have to let your network know that you're looking and doors can open that you didn't even know were there, right? So we can't be afraid to reach out to our network and let them know, hey, you know what? I gained this new skill set. And I gained this new thing that I'm doing. I, and I tried this new thing. And now I have all this tech, this knowledge and AI and whatever piece of AI that fits your particular industry. Because, And I keep saying AI because AI is something that's taken over so much where we're beginning to lean more and more on machine learning and AI in order to complete daily tasks. And so being able to adapt to that, being able to be able to work either behind the scenes on that or either know how to use it to get your particular job function done will really make you marketable to a lot of companies. A lot of companies are looking for people who have a lot of AI in their background because AI is in everything we're doing now. And so we don't want to rule those types of things out. We want to make sure that we look for things and skills that we can learn that's really going to enhance our position that we're in. But for now, you want to look for those skills that you currently have that are transferable to any industry. That's what we first want to start with. You know, we're looking to move before we even think about upskilling or reskilling. Let's think about, okay, what do I currently have? What am I currently doing that I can transfer to any industry? Because like I said, this is something I really had to think about. I really had to think about, okay, Sean, if you had to change position, change fields, right? What is it that you have? And you know what's so funny is that it's not just what I do on my resume, but it's also the other things that I do to build this podcast. It's the other things I do to build my business. It's the marketing. It's the social media. It's the planning and strategy piece too. So think about everything that you're good at that you can take to another position and be able to sell yourself to them, be able to market those particular skills to others that can really show how committed you are and just show your diverse background. Because I'm more than just my job. Remember, I told you guys that I was more than just the job title. I was more than just a job function that I was due. I'm a multi-passionate and I'm a multi-talented person. I could do so many different things. And so being able to show some of those things to a new role in a role that's completely different from what I'm used to doing can be beneficial to me. And it can be beneficial to you if you're in that position. So don't be afraid to go after those jobs where if you're good at social media, but it's not something you do like as a job, but you're good at it. You're good at the strategy, the planning, the creating, then use that, use that to move into a different role because you never know. You might enjoy that more than what you're doing now. It's just something I wanted to say that because I feel like it's something, it's something to think about. And it was something for me to think about. I had to think about every skill set that I have. I'm so good at different things. And if I had to go get a job doing this thing, or if I had to take clients, right, become a consultant and take clients, then I would. Because one thing I know is that I'm good at designing. I'm good at social media, right, helping people build their social media profiles. And so it's always been that thing of like friends are always coming. You know, you should do social media to help other companies, you know, build their brands, make sure their brand identity is together and consistent across all platforms. You're really good with creatives. You should really help other companies do it. And it's never been something that I really saw myself doing. But lately, which is so funny, I have been getting calls from people that I know or people who refer people to me trying to help them with their social media, how to help them get branding, right? With their developing their website, people are like, oh, I just want it to look nice. I want it to look pretty because when they look at my stuff, they see it and just like, man, your stuff looks so great. Your stuff looks so well put together. I really want you to do that for me. And it's not something I wanted to do, but now it's something that I'm beginning to see that one, I can make money from it. And people value my skill. And it's a skill set that I have that I never thought about marketing before. I never thought about it. And so now I'm like, now all this stuff is coming to me for these types of projects. And I'm taking all these projects and I'm like, I'm good at a lot of different things. <laughs> I can do this too. And so that's where I'm at now. And so, you know, finally, I want to touch on the psychological benefits when it comes to 
upscaling and reskilling. Like when you learn something new, it can be incredibly empowering, right? Especially after a setback or a job loss. And so it provides a sense of progress. It can provide you a sense of purchase, a purpose, which can be crucial during challenging times. And that's what I mean by learning new things. When you learn something new, you do get kind of excited. I mean, be honest, you get kind of excited when you learn something new because you're like, I did that. I didn't think I could do it, but I did it. And I know when it comes to learning something new, as we get older, we get so settled into our position, into that job title, that the thought of learning something new is just exhausting. It's exhausting. And trust me, I know. I'm almost, I'll be 50 years old in January. And it's like, I don't feel like learning nothing new. I've learned everything new that I want to learn. But I am a person who loves to learn. I am a person who is always adapting, learning new skills, new things when it comes to so many things that I do. And so, but I do know that it's hard for some people to change. It's hard for some people to adapt. But if you want to stay relevant and you want to stay current, you're going to have to push past your limitations. You're going to have to push past your comfortability. And you're going to have to push past your, your fears and your doubt to be able to really see yourself grow in something. And you want by focusing, and listen, by focusing on your growth, you're not only prepping for your future job opportunities or just maybe entrepreneurship opportunities, but you're also boosting your confidence and your resilience. Because remember, every new skill you learn is a step towards rebuilding and reinventing your career path. That's what it does. Your career path, your even your entrepreneurship. I don't want you guys to think that I've been doing this series on surviving a job loss and it has nothing to do with entrepreneurship because it does. Because I have always been that nine to five girl who worked and always fund my side hustle. And so being able to go through this different experience, it has allowed me to understand the landscape of, of the job market, understand how the different aspects of when you lose a job and what that means. But this also, a lot of these episodes applies to entrepreneurship. Because if you want to see your business grow, you have to learn new things. You have to learn marketing. You have to learn different technology. You have to learn sales. Those are all upscaling and reskilling, right? Because those are the things you have to learn in order to see your business grow. Because a lot of times we don't have, we're just coming out as entrepreneurs, we don't have the budget to hire marketing people. We don't have the budget to hire social media people. We don't have the budget to hire sales people. <laughs> You don't have the budget to hire finance people, right? So like you're doing all this yourself and what you're doing is you're, you're learning new things. And that's why I said, although I've been out of work all this time, which is a year now, I've also learned so many different new skills that I can offer to another opportunity if I choose to. And that's why I'm like, hmm, being in an entrepreneurship role, is it's not bad. You can learn a lot of different things because a lot of things you have to do for yourself. And you know what? And that's okay. It really is. It's okay if you have to do it. That's just where we all start out in the beginning. Not all of us are able to go and hire a team and hire this and hire that. Some of us have to do it ourselves. And I'm just happen to be one of those per people at this moment. I want to put that out there at this moment where I have to do it myself. And so I've learned a lot of things. I've learned a lot in this past year that I'm like, if I wanted to, I can actually go get a job as a social media manager. I can go get a job with, in strategy and planning for any type of field because I'm good at strategy and planning. And I'm like, okay, I've learned a few skill sets. And that's any entrepreneur. We learn a lot. We are naturally consuming things consistently because the landscape of entrepreneurship is consistently changing right? Opportunities are different. And so you want to make sure that you stay in a place of learning. You stay in a place of growing and you stay in a place of adaptability because as an entrepreneur, you have to adapt because things change instantly and you have to be able to adapt to it. And so listen, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode. It's not a long one, but it's a roadmap. There you have, this was the roadmap for reinventing your career path through upskilling and reskilling in 2024. Because that's just where we are. 2024 is hitting real different. It's a real different kind of landscape. 
it's a different kind of job landscape and you really need to attack this differently. And it's never too late to learn something new, to adapt to a changing job market. Because like I told you, this whole job market is different. As always, if this episode you found this episode to be helpful to you, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you leave a review so that way you don't miss any episodes. And also, I would love to hear your thoughts. And if you have any questions, please DM me on all my social channels, you know, at Girl Techno Pod. But until next time, keep learning and keep growing. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you for listening or watching the Girl Techno Podcast. And we really hope that this episode gets you one step further in turning your passions into profits. If you liked today's episode, please make sure you like, subscribe, and follow Girl Techno Podcast on all social channels. And also make sure you review the episode as your reviews are so important to help us grow. Also, please leave us a comment as we would love to know your thoughts and opinions on this episode and also any other episodes that you might want to see from the Girl Techno Podcast. Until next time, we'll see you in the next episode.